journey as being an entrepreneur and speaker? And how have you kind of overcome those challenges? I think one challenge that I would say I faced was less external and more internal challenges. Mm -hmm. For myself, it was me facing my own inner voice and self-doubt at times. Mm -hmm. When it came to me as a motivational speaker, me finding the courage to go out and constantly share my story, right. even though speaking in front of, you know, crowds full of people wasn't something I was very comfortable with when I first got started. Mm -hmm. I remember I had early speaking engagements. Some people invited me in to speak. And when I went in, I completely bombed it. Right. Like I went in, I, I, I got in front of the people, forgot what I was about to say, messed up, stuttered, you know, yeah. like bombed the whole speech. And it was in those moments where it hurt so much because it was like, man, this person trusted me mm -hmm. to have me come in and speak. They they saw the motivational videos I was doing online at this time. I'm in eighth grade, you know, tr making that transition in ninth grade. Um, I'm, I think, 16 years old at the time, something like that. I'm like, oh, they trusted me to come in and speak. And I completely messed it up. And my that internal voice can can really get you because it's like when when you mess up and, and you're beating yourself up it's mm -hmm. like oh you're, you're you're not good enough you're not a speaker you can't get in front of another crowd you're gonna embarrass yourself and it was me facing that and me having the courage even after I messed up mm -hmm. even after I bombed this speech to get up on that stage again and to try again, me going back to the drawing board and mm -hmm. practicing and practicing and practicing and not giving up on myself, even though it wasn't something I was comfortable with. Right. One thing that I always try to express to people, although it may not be comfortable, on the other side of embracing that mm -hmm. uncomfortability is your growth. And mm -hmm. I feel like that is the biggest key. You have to embrace what's uncomfortable to you mm -hmm. because on the other side of that is real transformation. And that was one thing that I really had to face as a speaker. And also as an entrepreneur, when I first got started, people think that it's a very fun journey, which there are very fun parts. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, you know, you kind of underestimate the real work that goes into a behind the scenes. Right. And it's easy to do that. Right. It's like, oh, you're out here. You're making so much money. Right. And it's like that's what people around me thought they were like oh man marquis got it he making money with his brand boom there were so many months where there were months when i first got started where i made no sales mm -hmm. right there were months when i got started where i was barely covering what i paid for my product mm -hmm. and it gets to a point where it's like internally you're like man is entrepreneurship for me is running my own business for me, right? Should I keep this going or, or should I go and, you know, get a job? Should I go pick a different route, right? Right. And for me, it was facing that inner voice internally as, as well, you know, reminding myself, it may not look pretty now. Mm -hmm. It may not be perfect now. You may not understand everything that goes into a business right now. But if you stay consistent with it, if you keep showing up every single day with mm -hmm. the mindset to learn, with the mindset to grow, yeah. you will become a better entrepreneur. You will grow this business, right? You will right. start getting those sales that you're looking for. Right. But I feel like we have to go through yes, that you period. Yes. You have to. You have to face yes. the fact that this isn't going to be easy. This is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But when you embrace that, you know, it, it gives you the opportunity to do something great. Mm -hmm. So I would say my biggest challenge that I faced as a speaker and entrepreneur is myself. Mm -hmm. I feel like there is nothing in my journey that can stop me but myself, but right. my own mental. So as long as I can keep my mental health a priority and as long as I can cancel out that negative inner voice, I know I can make anything happen. You can. You can. Like yeah. one of my coaches always say, it's like um, nothing worth easy 
it's going to, you know, it's going to happen overnight, right? Everybody right. see, everybody can see, oh, you got all these posts, you got all these sales, but they, mm -hmm. like you said, they don't know the months that you went without any sales. They don't know the preparation that you have to go through to get yourself ready to go speak for a school, right? Or a sporting event. Like, it's not like right. you're just going and saying the same message. Like you said, every message is tailored, right? So it's a lot exactly. that comes with it. It's a lot of sleepless hours. It's a lot of hours staying up past 12, writing stuff down. You know what I'm saying? Like when you have have real goals but like you said the mental part man the mental part can get through through so much like you're able to push through so much more physically when mentally you're at a you know at the right crossroads about it right wow. so just to have that you know that mental side and leadership of yourself like you said can't nobody stop you but you and mm -hmm. so like I said I'm listening to you and I'm just smiling because I'm getting so it's like so powerful and you overcoming me and I'm just like man I'm going to stop talking. I got another question for you. Can you provide an example of a time where you saw, you know, your your message or something change somebody's life as a result from that message? Oh, my goodness. This is definitely touched me on so many different levels, like, because I never imagined right. it being able to reach somebody um, that way. So I've had, you know, multiple experiences of, you know, students coming up to me after the speaking engagements, like crying, right? And it's mm -hmm. like, it's like, man, you know, like when, when they come to me crying, I'm like, what's wrong? What happened to you? But they're like, no, like your message really touched me. Like recently, I was just at a school, South Paul, the middle school, and this young girl had came up to me, you know, her eyes are teary. And she was like, I've been going through so much right now. And that message, I really needed it. Yes. And it's like, you never know who you touching. You never know how your words can impact somebody. That's why I encourage people. We all human. We all going through things on a daily basis, right. fighting silent battles that we don't talk about. I feel like it's our responsibility, even with everything that we dealing with in our own lives to give everybody grace because we all dealing with something we and all we all need that, that little light in our day everybody like everybody needs it so that was a very recent experience and I was actually just in Santa Barbara not too long ago and while I was there um there was a summer program out there called CASC that was one of my most memorable speaking engagements you know the the, the students there in the summer program just amazing and I remember um we were doing a Q&A after the speech and there was um this girl her name is is, is Starling and she was like, this is less of a question. She was like, I just want you to know, and I'm probably going to butcher exactly what she said, but she was like, it's ironic that you have holes in your heart because you probably got one of the most fullest hearts <laughs> than a lot of people in this world. Wow. And, and, and that touched me so much. And, you know, that moment was just very special to me. The way she articulated it, you know, like the the the, the time that she took to, you know, hear the message. Mm -hmm. And then, like, she felt that. Like, that's one thing that I really appreciated. And, you know, one thing that she pointed out, I actually posted a clip about it as well. And she actually pointed out another student. His name was Robert, if I'm not mistaken. And she was like, no other speaker has been able to touch Robert how you have. Yeah. And I'm like, that's that's an honor, right? Like, it's not something I take and it's like, oh yeah, I'm the I'm, I'm one yeah. of the greatest people. Like, yeah. never, right? It's right. like I'm honored to be able to reach others like in that way and make that impact because you never know who you can right. reach with your message when you're just being authentic. Mm -hmm. But that was a very special moment for me in Santa Barbara. Wow, thank you for sharing it. But I, I like I said, I'm a firm believer. Like if if every day I can hit touch one person just for a second, like I'm doing my job, right? Because like you said, you never know those silent battles that somebody is facing, right? To be able to receive, you know, you're you talking to you talk to people a lot, but be able to receive and be like, okay, I know they're they're taking all of this in, right? That's a joy to you. And it's a motivation to you, like, okay, I am teaching, I am. I am being able to touch one person, right? And that just keeps you going, right? Because everybody right. needs that. You need that as well. And so to yeah. have that, to be able to have those messages and be able to have people crying after your engagement, tears of joy that you touched them, man, that's, that's like I said, that's powerful to be able to, to be that way with young athletes and young students and to be 
to be able to be a voice for them is great. For sure. One last question. What advice would you give other young people who are passionate about making a difference but may not know where to start? My biggest piece of advice is start with what you have exactly where you are mm -hmm. and don't overcomplicate it for yourself. I know early in my journey, it was as simple as me picking up my phone, pressing record. And that's where the journey started. Mm -hmm. And I could have sat there and, you know, made a whole strategic plan or even did a whole bunch of research. But I feel like the biggest thing that we can do is just take that first step. Mm -hmm. And um, for people, you know, like striving to make a difference, one thing that you're going to realize is nobody has your story, right? Like nobody has your experiences. Since we are all, right, our own person, we're going to relate to others in a way that another person can't. Right. Like people tell me all the time, Marquise, I want to do what you do. I want to speak how you speak. Mm. I'm like, no, I need you to be like you. I need you to dive deep into you because you're going to touch people in a way that I can't touch people. Mm -hmm. You went through this. You went through that. You came from here. You're going to touch somebody that's there that I can never reach how you can. Right. So I feel like to anybody that is aspiring to, you know, whether it's speaking, whether it's making a difference in another way, stay very authentic to yourself. Mm -hmm. Like if you stay true to yourself and you show up every single day, that consistency is key. You stay true to yourself and you show up every single day, you're going to impact and reach people in a way that you may not even be able to imagine right now. Mm -hmm. But I know that's where it starts with us taking that first step. Mm -hmm. There's a quote, and I can't remember exactly who it's by. I feel like it's by Zig Ziglar. And he says, you don't have to be great to start, mm -hmm. but you have to start in order to be great. Yes. And I feel like that's the the only answer. If you want to make a difference, start. And once you take that first step, you're going to see, OK, I don't know what to do next. Research. Cool. I, do, I did the research. This is the next step. And that's all the journey is. It's starting. It's learning. It's failing. But picking yourself back up and keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your journey. Thank you so much for being a part of Zooming with K. Mitch and taking some time out. Y'all heard it here, y'all. The best way to start is just to go ahead and start, right? Because it, it can be scary starting up. It can be, it, it's going to be those fears, those doubts creep in. Like, should you start? You don't have it all together yet. But you just right. have to go for it, right? You go for it first, and then you figure out how to do it within those trials and tribulations of it. But like you said, you got to be great. To, you got to You got to start to be great right be great. you ain't gonna start off being right where you want it to be you gotta grind it out and see it and that's where you build humility that's where you build that humbleness and that and that that like the resilience to keep going you know past you're even capable of thinking right we we think we're here when we got so much in store for us right so like yep. I said, thank you so much I have your book on the way, y'all. Everybody go Thank out. You. I have the link or something in my YouTube whenever I post it. But Love Yourself More today is out by Marquise. He has multiple books out. Y'all go out and read. Go get y'all some gear. Go get your uh -huh. hat and hoodie. You said you got more stuff on the way, more clothing on the oh, way. Yeah. Everything is up, going up here from here now, Marquise. Thank you so much. You have touched me dearly this morning and motivated me. Man, I'm like, man, I'm ready to go <laughs> run or something. Like, Let's I'm go. so motivated. <laughs> But thank you so much. I'm not going to take any more of your time because I know you're busy, but I appreciate you so much. And I'll be in touch with you. Thank you again, Marquise. Thank you, Kayla. I truly appreciate you. Thank you for your platform and what you're doing as well. I definitely love your energy, your positivity. And I know that's definitely inspiring me. So thank you so much for your time. And I appreciate you hopping on with me. All right. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Bye-bye.